change from this morning. The airline says it will consider putting on additional services to try and clear the path. Not much point going too far into this one because we only collected one piece of interesting audio. Uh, now before we have a listen to that, we've had a couple of comments stating that the footsteps audio that we're collecting is just wallabies. Now I assumed that the included uh, comparison chart was enough information for most of you to see the difference between wallabies and unknown subjects. But it's not enough information for everyone. So. We'll now have a uh, statistics page with all the information that I can prove from the audio and what we already know is fact. Now this will include a stride length comparison and chart, amount of footsteps and chart, and maximum bottom end frequencies and chart. Now when I'm talking about frequencies, I'm actually talking about the weight of a subject. This is a wallaby we caught on one of the trial cameras and at the heaviest part of his hop, he registers around 2000 hertz which is at the bottom of the signature. Now this unknown subject from video number 40 has an average bottom end frequency of 46 hertz. That's very heavy. And you can see the concentrations at the bottom of the page. This unknown subject from video number 45 has the same bottom end frequency uh, concentrations at the bottom of the scale. Full range frequency signatures. And when I see that, I know that whatever it is, it's a lot bigger than me. Now I have tried to replicate those audio signatures on several occasions and I'm nowhere near heavy enough to replicate those. Here's an example you can see for yourself, a 10 kilogram weight dropped from a height of one meter. Here's the audio signature showing similar characteristics. Back to the audio we collected and the new charts and we can see that the subject has a stride length halfway between myself and a wallaby. He takes 29 steps in one hit and has a 66% heavier impact than a wallaby. Now, the interesting thing about this audio is the subject sounds like it's rolling its fingers and slapping the battery box. Now I believe uh, it is something, but don't take my word for it because I could be wrong. So look at the numbers, look at the statistics and decide for yourself. One last thing I've decided to include is an estimated height. Now Scientific American is saying that there is a known relationship between height and stride length. By knowing the distance of someone's stride length, it's possible to estimate their height to within a couple of inches. Now I did check this with a scientist and his reply was, if you are right, if someone has a stride length 95% of yours, that is 5% smaller, then their height should be about 5% smaller than yours too. So if that's them, and if he or she is walking in a normal fashion, he or she should be 5 foot 4. This is only an estimation and it will never be a fact, but it'll give us a rough idea of who's out there. We didn't get anything here, but the plot watchers picked up a feral cat, and the bad news is the CCTV camera didn't which means I need a new DVR and another battery. This could take months. Well, that took a bit, didn't it? Anyway, six months later, 
we now have the bits that we need. Uh, thanks very much to um, everyone who uh, offered their assistance. I do appreciate it. Thanks very much to Adam, uh, who gave me a great deal on a battery over Christmas. I think he's one of our subscribers. Thanks, Adam. And thanks very much to a generous donor who insisted and wouldn't take no for an answer and bought the batteries that we needed. So in that box there, there is now $1,900 worth of batteries, 520 amps, and that should be more than enough to run our gear uh, for the entire week. Now, over the last... Ever since I started tying my camera traps to a tree, something new has been happening. Um, and that is they're now coming in from behind. And that's for two reasons. One, the camera trap's tied to a tree and it looks like it's facing forward. Two, you can't see the cameras. So it's as simple as that. So now we have... Uh, I've built a new camera trap out of a garbage bin. Inside it has four CCTV cameras running continuously facing backwards covering the entire background. Um, providing the electronics work, we should see something. Anyway, let's see how it goes. Well, the good news is that the electronics worked as I hoped they would, uh, recording the entire week from uh, four different cameras, although the footage isn't ideal. The plot watchers picked up a number of things that I thought may have been something, but the CCTV confirmed that we didn't get anything of interest. On the sixth morning, the audio recorders picked up some barks and whistles from behind the trap. Dusk on the fourth afternoon we picked up a one hour long territorial display with over 90 vocalizations. Now I couldn't enhance most of it but I managed to clean up this one. It has a faint ascending call followed by three wood knocks then two faint wood knocks followed by another ascending call. <laughs> The next piece is the very end of the display as they come closer to the camera trap. It has barking, whistles and primate type calls. I'm going to make a few adjustments uh, to the rig and we'll try again. I'm just out here uh, setting up the gear. I've been here probably three quarters of an hour. And way down there there's barking 
and whistles. Well, there it is. Uh, a few additions. We've got a, uh, like a roof top on top there. That's to hide extra cameras in the top. My Vio isn't working. My head camera isn't working this morning. So you won't get to see it. But uh, anyway, there's the batteries. There's the rig. We're in a new place. There's obviously activity here. And that's the second barking I've ever heard. And that's the first time I've ever heard whistles. So, uh, pretty sure we're going to get something, uh, at least on audio. We'll get some activity. Okay. There was activity here, but most of it was in the distance. The audio recorders picked up barking early in the morning. Wood knocks, which could be people, but who knows. And something come in behind the setup again. Uh, now a trail bike starts approaching down the fire trail and whatever it is, stomped on the ground and took off. Plot watchers picked up a lot of stuff, but only a couple of pieces that might be something. The CCTV cameras were either too powerful or not facing in the right direction. So if I keep the cameras on wide angle, we may very well catch what we're after, but the resolution is so bad we'll never get a good look at what it is. If I use the monoculars to zoom in, we're restricting our chances. So I need box cameras with adjustable zoom. I need a high definition CCTV setup. And I need a way to video what's coming in behind the setup. If you're new to the channel, go check out the website. The audio page is the most convincing. Thanks for watching.